Let's see if we can calculate the definite integral from 0 to 1 of x squared times 2 times 2 to the x to the third power dx. And like always, I encourage you to pause this video and see if you can figure this out, figure this out on your own. So I'm assuming you've had a go at it. And so there's a couple of interesting things here. The first thing, at least that my brain does, it says, well, I'm used to taking derivatives and antiderivatives of e to the x, not some other base to the x. So we know that the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x. Or we could say that the antiderivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x plus c. So since I'm dealing with a something raised to a in this particular situation, something raised to a function of x, it seems like I might want to put some, I might want to change the base here. But how do I do that? Well, the way I would do that is re-express 2 in terms of e. So what would be 2 in terms of e? Well, 2 is equal to e is equal to e raised to the power that you need to raise e to to get to 2. Well, what's the power that you have to raise e to to get to 2? Well, that's the natural log of 2. Once again, the natural log of 2 is the exponent that you have to raise e to to get to 2. So if you actually raise e to it, you're going to get 2. So this is what 2 is. Now, what is 2 to the x to the third? Well, if we raise both sides of this to the x to the third power, if we raise both sides to the x to the third power, 2 to the x to the third is equal to, if I raise something to an exponent and then raise that to an exponent, it's going to be equal to e to the x to the third, x to the third times the natural log of 2, times the natural log of 2. So that already seems pretty interesting. So let's, let's rewrite this. And actually, what I'm going to do is let's just focus on the indefinite integral first, see if we can figure that out. And then we can apply, and then we can take, we can evaluate the definite ones. So let's just, let's just think about this. Let's think about the indefinite integral of x squared times 2 to the x to the third power dx. So I really want to find the antiderivative of this. Well, this is going to be the exact same thing as the integral of, so I'll write my x squared still. But instead of 2 to the x to the third, I'm going to write all of this business. And let me just copy and paste that. We already established this is the same thing as 2 to the x to the third power. Copy and paste just like that. And then let me just close it with a dx. So I was able to get it in terms of e as a base. That makes me a little bit more comfortable, but it still seems pretty complicated. But you might be saying, well, OK, look, maybe u substitution could be at play here. Because I have this, this kind of crazy expression, x to the third times the natural log of 2. But what's the derivative of that? Well, that's going to be 3x squared times the natural log of 2, or 3 times the natural log of 2 times x squared. Well, that's just a constant times x squared. We already have a x squared here. And so maybe we can engineer this a little bit to have the constant there as well. So let's think about that. So if we made this, if we defined this as u, so if we said u is equal to x to the third times the natural log of 2, what is du going to be? Well, du is going to be, it's going to be, well, natural log of 2 is just a constant. So it's going to be 3x squared times the natural log of 2. And we can actually just change the order we're multiplying a little bit. We could say that this is the same thing as x squared times 3 natural log of 2, which is the same thing, just using logarithm properties, as x squared times the natural log of 2 to the third power. 3 natural log of 2 is the same thing as the natural log of 2 to the third power. So this is equal to x squared times the natural log of 8. So let's see. If this is u, where is du? Oh, and of course, we can't, we can't forget the dx. This is a dx right over here. dx, dx, dx. So where is the du? Well, we have a dx. Let me circle things. So you have a dx here. You have a dx there. You have an x squared here. You have an x squared here. So really, all we need is all we need here is the natural log of 8. So if we ideally, we would have a natural log of 8 right over here. And we could put it there as long as we also, we can multiply by a natural log of 8 as long as we also divide by a natural log of 8. 
And so we could we could do it like he, right over here. We could write we could divide by natural log of eight. But we know that the antiderivative of some constant times a function is the same thing as a constant times the antiderivative of that function. So we could just take that on the outside. So it's one over the natural log of eight. So let's write this in terms of u and du. This simplifies to one over the natural log of eight times the antiderivative of e, e to the u, e to the u, that's the u, du. This times this times that is du, du. And this is straightforward. We know what this is going to be. This is going to be equal to, so let me just write the one over natural log of eight out here. One over natural log of eight times times e to the u, times e to the u, e to the u. And of course, if we're thinking in terms of just antiderivative, there would be some constant out there. And then we would just reverse the substitution. We already know what u is. So this is going to be equal to the antiderivative of this expression is one over the natural log of eight times e to the, instead of u, we know that u is x to the third times the natural log of two and of course, we could put a plus c there. Now, going back to the original problem, we just need to evaluate the antiderivative of this at each of these points. So let's rewrite this. So given what we just figured out, so let me copy and paste that. This is just going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to the antiderivative evaluated at one minus the antiderivative evaluated at zero. We don't have to worry about the constants because those will cancel out. And so we are going to get, we are going to get one, let me evaluate it first at one. So you're going to get one over the natural log of eight times e to the one to the third power, which is just one times the natural log of two. Natural log of two, that's it evaluated at one. And then we're going to have minus it evaluated at zero. So it's going to be one over the natural log of eight times e to the, well, when x is zero, this whole thing is going to be zero. Well, e to the zero is just one. And e to the natural log of two, well, that's just going to be two. We already established that early on. This is just going to be equal to two. So we are left with, 2 over the natural log of 8 minus 1 over the natural log of 8, which is just going to be equal to 1 over the natural log of 8. And we are, and we are done.